Are you too focused on what your life should look like instead of focusing on how your life actually feels? Welcome to the Search for Serotonin podcast, a podcast all about letting go of what you thought your life would look like and embracing your life for exactly what it is. Hi, I'm Carolyn, and this podcast is my audio diary where I share the struggles of being in your 20s, what going to therapy really looks like, and what it's like to live with severe high-functioning anxiety, clinical depression, and perfectionism. We all battle our own demons, but we shouldn't feel alone because of it. If you feel like you're not good enough or that you're behind in life, then let's start searching for serotonin together. Welcome to the search committee. What is up, my search committee members? Welcome back to another episode of the Search for Serotonin podcast. This is your host, Carolyn Farrick. And wow, what a week it has been. <laughs> I have felt like blah this week. I felt very, uh, very tired, very, mm, I don't really want to do anything. <laughs> and I get it. It's that time of year, you know, January, crappy month, you know, not very exciting. A lot of times it's dark, it's cold, it's rainy it's snowy, you know, it's just, it's not my favorite month of the year. And normally I think January just drags and drags and drags. But for some reason, this January, I feel like is flying by and I just can't keep up. So your girl's been tired. I've been sleeping a lot. I've literally been going to bed at like nine o'clock every single night. And I just, I don't care. I don't care. I want my sleep. I'm going to get it. And that's just where I have been at lately. So I wanted to check in and talk about last week's episode. Um, I had high hopes for last week's episode. I felt really confident about it. I knew what I wanted to say and I had this clear vision and I sat down to record and I feel like I just didn't get anything across that I wanted to. I do this sometimes where I sit down to record. I have all of these thoughts planned out. They make so much sense in my head. And then I sit down and I feel like this like performance anxiety almost like I need to, you know, put on a show or be some type of way or, you know, overthink about it. So I'm saying things in a way that won't possibly offend anybody, but then I turn it into, I'm not really saying anything and it, it doesn't really make sense. So I wasn't super happy with how last week's episode turned out, but I wanted to put it out there because I just, I didn't want to keep missing weeks of podcasting. I just, I, I don't know what happened last week. It wasn't my favorite. It really didn't get across what I wanted to. But again, I'm not going to talk myself in circles and make even less sense. And I just wanted to say it was a shitty episode. I didn't love it. I'm sorry, you guys. I didn't really know where to go from that this week. And I was really considering um, just stopping podcasting for a little bit. And I was like, I don't really feel inspired anymore. I just, I don't know what to say sometimes. Sometimes I feel like I'm doing it too much for what everyone else may think or say or want to see. And it's really not always is genuine to myself. So I was going to get on here and just say, you know, hey guys, I think I'm going to take a break for a little while. Um, but then I had therapy. It is Saturday morning currently for me. And I just logged off therapy with my therapist, Tina. And there is something I did want to talk about that I really did take away from this week's therapy session. Um, that I kind of wanted to touch on because it's something that I haven't talked about on the podcast because I'm afraid of how it'll make me look. Um, but it's something that I'm currently going through dealing with and overcoming. So I thought, you know, why not share it with all of you guys? It's been on my mind for a little while. But yeah, just know that I probably will be taking a break from prod podcasting, no podcasting here in the upcoming weeks, just because I am doing a lot <laughs> offline behind the scenes, not only for the fo the podcast, what the fuck the podcast, I can't say that today. Um, I'm doing a lot for not only the podcast, but myself behind the scenes. And I think after January, I might take 
a little step back from the podcast. Um, I might just focus on doing my life, you know, offline for a little bit. I'll still probably post on Instagram and just keep some traction going there. So then that way you guys can keep up to date with me and when the podcast comes back out. But just with where I've been at and everything going on, I think that will be coming. It won't be this week because like I said, I did feel inspired to talk about this. So just so you guys are aware, I don't want to leave you guys in the dark, um, but that's just kind of where I'm at. I think a break is really going to be good for me and the show in general because I've been doing this for over a year straight. And I think just for personally where I'm at and with what's going on in my own life, I think I do need to take some time to just focus on me and my situation. And then that way I can take a much needed break, rest up, get my head right and come back stronger and better than ever because I don't feel like I'm helping a lot of people right now. You know, I want to be in a good space to put out a show that really does help and inspire you guys as well. So yeah, I just wanted to be very transparent this episode, really tell you guys where I'm at, really tell you guys what I've been going through. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's get into therapy thick. It's time for Therapy Think, a segment all about destigmatizing mental health through therapy. During this segment, I will give you a sneak peek inside of my weekly therapy sessions and share what I took away from therapy this week. So I started off this week's therapy session by talking about how I've been feeling really blah this week. I told my therapist, you know, I really don't feel like I did that much. I feel like I slept a lot. I just was really drained. And as I'm going through everything that I accomplished this week, my therapist was like, Jesus Christ, I would hate to see a good week for you because this bad week is full of stuff that you did, like so many accomplishments. And she was like, is there a better word that you could use to describe this week other than blah? And immediately I was like, oh yeah, it's balance. It's obviously balance. Like I may have felt blah, but instead of feeling just blah and depressed and like the week was dragging and nothing mattered, I felt like I was able to focus my attention on the things that needed to be focused on in the moment when I was doing those things. But then I was also able to have time and give myself the space to rest, recover, and feel good. So not only was I doing what I needed to do, but I was resting when I needed to rest and everything kept in, you know, their own compartments. Nothing was getting really blurred together. So I told her it was more balanced really than feeling overwhelmed or overrun. And she asked me, she's like, when you feel overwhelmed, what do you really feel like that overwhelm is because of? And I told her, well, I usually feel overwhelmed because I'm afraid that there's not enough time or I'm afraid that I'm falling behind or whatever fear that comes up is happening. That's usually what I'm feeling. And that's why I get overwhelmed because I'm afraid that, oh my God, you're not doing this fast enough or you don't have enough time or you can't do this faster so you can get to do what you actually want. And it's those fears that bubble up that really get me to that point of overwhelm. And I told her, you know, I really haven't felt overwhelmed this year. Like I haven't felt anxious. I haven't felt pulled in a bunch of different directions. I've just felt very, you know, calm. And like, as things come up, even when things come up, it's not, oh my God, I'm so overwhelmed or, oh, there's not enough time or oh, I don't know what to do. It's just been, okay, this thing is happening, but it's all going to get figured out and it's all going to happen in its own time. And I don't really need to stress about it. And so this feeling has really come from all of the work that I have been doing. You know, I have been working on being in touch with my emotions. I've been working on, you know, realizing what causes me stress. I've been working on my intentions behind doing things. And the thing that I really did this week, you know, I had a day where 
I was running around working, doing stuff with my family. And then I had two days where I was babysitting for my sister and taking care of my niece. So I really only had one day this week to devote to me and kind of what I needed slash wanted to do. And instead of trying to, you know, rush and be like, oh my God, I only have one day this week. I have to like be busy and move forward with things and do X, Y, and Z and blah, 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 blah. Instead of doing that, I was like, what do you really want to do? Like, what do you want to do? So obviously I don't wash my hair more than like twice a week and I hadn't washed it this week. And I was just like, you know, I really want to take time to take a bath, wash my hair, take a long shower, you know, do a body scrub, moisturize, like do a face mask. So I was like, I will do that on my one day, but that's my self-care piece. What's my like thing that I'm doing to you know create something so I was like I want to write I haven't written in a really long time um writing has been something that has really helped me in my healing journey it started by just simply journaling taking notes down in my phone and I've been on this healing journey since like 2020 so it's coming into the third year of my healing journey I've only been podcasting for about a year of it but um we started back in 2020 and at first you know it was a lot of journaling and a lot of writing and all of that kind of stuff but slowly that writing has evolved into a podcast and that podcast has evolved into me writing to heal from some very traumatic things and at first I started writing poems to heal from the sexual assault that I experienced and those poems turned into me writing more about every aspect of my life and where I've been, where I've come now and how I've gotten through a lot of that and how I've just grown as a person. And so I've mentioned this before. You guys may not know this. I don't really talk about it on the Instagram, but I am writing a book and I've been putting together these collections of poems. I've pulled some that I've written in like 2017, 2019, um, but most of them are going to be recent poems. And I'm writing these poems to put together a poetry book. And at first it was to heal from the sexual assault. It was to write about the sexual assault. It was to overcome that. But the more I write and the more I put effort into this and thought into this, the more it is becoming just an all-encompassing, you know, book about me and my life and what I've gone through and how I've become the person I am today and how I found my own self-love and just how I have grown. And I really haven't wanted to talk about writing the book because in my mind, I've always thought, well, people don't care that you're writing a book because you're not a writer. And who are you to think that you can write this book and put your like opinion and story out there? Like who cares? But It's not really for anyone else or for anyone else's opinions because this is what I want to do. This is something I've always wanted to do. And if it's a way that I can help myself heal and process these things and kind of put my voice out into the world even further, then like I'm going to do it. And I don't know how to write a book. I don't know how to publish a book. I don't know anything. But I was like, you know what? Write. Because you have all these ideas, you have these notes in your notes app filled with these just thoughts and concepts and ideas and messages and feelings and emotion. So I've taken all of that and I put it into a Google Doc and I'm writing and I'm writing these poems and I'm writing this book and I have this concept that feels so fully encompassing of who I am as a person and I've never felt more excited or sure about doing anything in my life, even though I have no idea what I'm doing. But I love it and it makes me feel so free and it makes me feel so powerful because I get to control this I get to put my story out in a way that I can't do with this podcast and so just taking it one step further and being able to write has been so cool for me but I wanted to write this week and I haven't really been writing since before the holidays because 
I've just, I've gotten in my own way. And for some reason I haven't felt motivated. I haven't wanted to, I haven't felt inspired. Like, yeah, I've had little ideas pop up that I'll put in a notes app and be like, turn these into poems at some point. But right now they're just like thoughts. And so I've been keeping note of these thoughts, but I haven't been taking the next step and writing. And writing is so good for me because it helps me get so much out and it helps me feel so at peace. And so I was telling my therapist this, this week in therapy, and I was saying, you know, I decided on my day off, I wanted to write and I wanted to get back into writing and I hadn't felt inspired and I hadn't felt like I wanted to. So earlier in the week, I was reading over some of the poems I'd written in the past and I have my document very organized, you know, part one, part two, part three. And I added a section for free space of ideas that I had that I didn't know really where it fit into the three parts. And I had written this one um, a while back and I had written it after I'd taken an edible. And I do smoke. I have not talked about that on the podcast ever because, again, I'm afraid what people are going to say. I'm afraid of what people are going to think. Oh, you're a mental health advocate and you're trying to heal your mental health, but you smoke weed all the time. And so I haven't owned up to that. But I started smoking weed before my sexual assault. And I really, really, really dove back into it after my sexual assault because I wanted to numb. I wanted to numb the pain. I didn't want to feel. I wanted to just feel light and happy and giggly and fun, which is how smoking weed used to make me feel. And before I go any further, I do want to say, like, I'm not suggesting anybody out there go out and pick up smoking weed. I'm not saying this is what you need to do. I'm just talking about me and what my journey has been like. And, you know, with weed, I used to do it in college because it was fun. You know, it took like all the pressure off of you. I used to feel like light and bubbly and giggly and I just have a good time and just feel happy. And so after the sexual assault, I leaned so much into smoking weed that I was like, this is the only way I can feel joy. Like, I don't feel joy unless I'm high. But the more I used it to find joy, the more it just brought out my insecurities and heightened my anxiety and gave me panic attacks and made me so freaked out that I would get so in my head that I would just sit in silence for like hours But I was like, no, I have to keep doing this to feel joy. I have to do it to feel good. And so something I've been working on with my therapist is using weed not because I have to, using it to, you know, get through the day or, you know, fall asleep or feel any sort of joy. Like I've been working on using it more intentionally and using it for the purpose of, you know, I want to take this edible because I want to relax or I want to take this edible because I want to, you know, watch a movie while I'm high. You know, I don't need to get high to fall asleep. I don't need to get high to eat a meal anymore. I don't need to get high to feel joy and removing that like dependency on it and taking it back to, well, this is the specific intentional reason that I'm using it. It's not because I have to, it's because I want to and so I was like damn I really like the poems I write when I take an edible and I'm just in this good headspace because sometimes when I'm in a sober mindset and I was explaining this to my therapist was that I have these thoughts and these emotions that I want to tap into and they're there but my sober brain has been so trained to be like no you have to focus your attention somewhere else or you have to distract yourself because you can't tap into those emotions. You've spent four years running away from them. So you can't get there when you're sober. And so then it makes me really hard on myself and it makes my writing bad and it feels forced and it feels gross and it feels not super fun. So I was like, why not try this week when I sit down to write, take an edible and see what happened because I felt like that last time I wrote when I took an edible I was really able to tap into my emotions and I was really able to get the points across and the feelings across that I wanted to and something I hadn't been able to do recently when sober and I explained to my therapist you know I took this edible I wrote 12 plus poems and they all came out the way that I wanted to the feeling was there the like messaging was there all of that 
And it felt really good to remind myself like, hey, I can tap into these emotions and it's not as scary as I think it is. I just needed the edible to help me focus on that task. And I don't need the edible to write the poems or, you know, write the book or put these thoughts together. But I just needed that little extra push this week because I had let weeks go by that I wasn't writing and I was afraid and I didn't want to do it. And I kept telling myself, well, here's every excuse not to, or here's every way you can distract yourself instead of getting it done. And so this week, taking the edible, sitting down, writing, focusing on those feelings again, and remembering that, hey, it's not that scary. It's not as hard as you make it seem like you can do this you just have to take it at your own time and your own pace and you have to feel comfortable enough to do this um was a nice reminder you know like I have that in like tensional use of the edible it's not because I had to it wasn't I wasn't relying on the edible I could have done it without the edible I just wanted that extra you know push of feeling like I could be relaxed and I could enter into those memories and those feelings and those thoughts in a relaxed, calm and collected and focused way rather than doing it, you know, without the edible and making it feel forced or unsafe or just leave a bad taste in my mouth and maybe put me off from writing for another however many months. So This week, I was really focused on my intentions of stuff. You know, when I needed to rest, I was resting. When I needed to be productive, I was being productive. But also not shaming myself for needing a little extra help. Because another thing my therapist said was, it's really nice to see that I am now doing this intentionally, like we have talked about, like we have worked on, but also viewing it more as like, an aid rather than a crutch you know like medication I take to aid me into making my life better with this case you know I took the edible to aid me in my writing I wasn't fully dependent on it I wasn't using it as a crutch I wasn't letting it support me I've now taken it to a place where I'm just like okay I can I can do this I don't have to feel bad about doing this. You know, people may judge me for using weed and edibles and that kind of stuff while having anxiety and having depression and dealing with my mental health. But I also do all of this legally. Um, I don't have a med card, but I do go to a smoke shop near my house that sells Delta 8 products, Delta 11 products, Delta 10 products, and Delta eight through 11 are all federally legal. So you don't need a med card. Um, And even though I live in Pennsylvania where you need a med card to recreationally use marijuana, um, it's federally legal in Pennsylvania for places to sell this. So like you can get it at gas stations, you can get it at smoke shops, you can get it in all kinds of forms. They do gummies, they do, you know, carts, they do actual flour, they do everything. So while I am taking these products, yes, they are federally legal. They are, you know, sold and bought through legal ways. Nothing illegal is happening. And it's also with the Delta 8 through 11, it's not as like high quality as something you'd get at a dispensary. So it's not as intense. So I'm able to use it in a way where I know my limits. I'm not getting into a situation where I'm forcing myself into panic attacks or I'm making my situation worse. I know the amount and when to stop and when to feel, you know, what feels good for me. So then I can use it in a way where I do feel relaxed. I do feel focused. I do feel in control. It's just a little assistance. So it's something I do. It's something I find helpful. I find weed, CBD, all of that stuff very interesting. And if it helps and you can do it safely and you can do it within your limits and you know how to do it, like I think drinking is more harmful than taking an edible or smoking weed. And that's just my view on things. I'm not trying to influence you guys to go out and smoke weed or, you know, do anything like that. This is just what's worked for me. It's something that interests me. And I haven't talked about it with you guys yet. So 
in the interest of continuing to be transparent, continuing to be honest, to continue to show you guys the full side of my journey. That was a big thing in my week about, you know, writing and helping myself heal and not guilting myself for needing a little extra help sometimes and doing this because I want to do it, not because I have to. And I don't need to feel guilty for doing something that so many people out there do. I know so many people who use weed for their anxiety or because of their mental health. And I wish people talked about the use of cannabis and cannabis products in association to mental health more because it can help and it doesn't always ha help. And I know sometimes it isn't good for people, but if we keep those things in the dark and we don't talk about them just like everything else surrounding mental health, then no one's ever going to learn. No one's ever going to be able to do better. No one's ever going to be able to figure out what's best for them. So I just wanted to bring light to it. I'm done feeling ashamed for taking an edible every, every, you know, so often or every once in a while because I like to and it makes me feel good and I'd rather feel relaxed and just good in my body than, you know, stressed or drunk. For you guys out there, if you have listened to this episode and you've resonated with anything, just remember to have grace for yourself. You can give it to other people, give it to yourself, and do what you need to do to feel good and make sure you're doing it in a way that works best for you. Because again, nobody knows you better than you. And if something works for you, don't feel ashamed about it because of what other people might say or how other people might judge you just remember that you're doing the best you can with what you have and remember to always try and incorporate balance and have the right intentions when you are going about your week all right you guys i hope this episode made sense i hope it was better than last week i don't know what i'm saying anymore i'm just <sighs> just saying stuff as it comes to me and just trying to navigate everything as much as I possibly can. Like I always do. I never know what the fuck I'm doing. And if you guys think I have it together, I absolutely do not. So if you don't have it together out there, we're in the same boat. I see you and I totally am rooting for you. All right, you guys, that is all for this week. Make sure you go follow at the search for serotonin on Instagram. So like I said, when I do take a little break from podcasting, you can stay up to date with me and when the podcast will return um, and anything else I have going on. All right, you guys, that is it for this week's episode. And I will see you back here next Monday, whether I have an episode or not put together, it will be determined next week as I go. Um, but even if I'm not putting out like a full episode next week, I will be back to put out an episode just to say, hey, I'm taking a break. And this is kind of how long that break will last or what that break is going to look like. So irregardless of what's happening, I will be back here next Monday. And I hope you guys have an amazing week. Go easy on yourself. Show yourself some love. And always remember this world is better with you in it. Bye.